to unlock the human potential that's in each and every single person in all of its great diversity. That is the promise of the human rights movement. Human rights are a powerful tool for each individual to find his or her place in a more equal society. Human rights is an ethical statement initially. What is it that we have reason to want for us and for our fellow human beings? By virtue of the fact of us being human beings, they are our rights. Rights to live, to say what we want, to be free. To be treated uh, fairly and equally, regardless of race or religion uh, or gender. To not be tortured, brutalized, abused. To be treated with dignity. What we've seen from the Second World War to Rwanda it's a collective failure of humanity. This can happen in any society. In late May 1992, my villagers and I were ordered to surrender. The Serb authorities set up three concentration camps. If you want to see what a genocide looks like, go to your bathroom and look in the mirror. I witnessed the war in Sierra Leone, and I witnessed a lot of the atrocities, the maiming and uh, um, chopping of arms and limbs. You don't get into human rights if you're scared. A brutal regime like the Taliban, denying us every single rights and freedoms that we have had, pushed us or pushed me to advocate for democracy and, and for freedom. That gets me into jail, I'll go through tortures, so that the, the activism is something comes naturally. There is a moral reasoning, an ethical reasoning, that tells you that you ought to do something. You need to empower people to enable them to get their rights. We have to think of claiming rights. People do it with a language they've heard, with support from others, with a community around them. They claim it through political dialogue. They claim it by demanding it of their governments. They claim it through the media and open media. They claim it through the justice system. The law can be an instrument of liberation and equality, or it can be an instrument of oppression. The whole community of outsiders, marginalized, poor, have to have their basic rights reinforced. When people feel they have access to legal services, even paralegal services, things change. The legal empowerment of the poor is human rights in a new bottle. A free press is critical to protect the individual from the enormous power of governments and their tendency to overreach. That is what journalism is supposed to be about, to ask questions about who's responsible for atrocities against civilians, to force governments to account for uncomfortable truths. Human rights violations, they come from the top. We, we have to hold our politicians to account on a daily basis. But when civil society comes together, begins to organize, and put pressure on the governments to do what is right, it makes a difference. Recently, you've seen people become active, whether in North Africa or the Middle East, leading people into the streets. Because of social networking, and because of the way the world is now, civil society is armed with the only weapon that civil society really needs, information and the ability to talk to each other. And it makes it very difficult to deny people their rights. The Arab Spring experience, but also the experience of things like the Occupy movements, have actually emboldened citizens. There are still huge challenges with customs and traditions. Things like female genital mutilation, honor killings, uh, child marriage, 10 million girls every year. These traditions are also extremely fragile. And they are really based on survival. Uh, without questioning, and it's the questioning that we have to do. I was in Senegal. We had about, oh, about 1,800 girls, and we discussed what was human rights. And the girls said to me, they said, you know, we're not human. And I said, why are you not human? They said, because we don't have these rights. These are the hard social battles. There are sources for the protection and promotion of human rights in every culture, in every religion, in every country across the globe. In some places it's rather secular in terms of a Bill of Rights or a Constitution. Some, it comes from holy books and scriptures, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. We should tell people who do not know what their rights are, what kind of rights people are enjoying elsewhere. How do we use proverbs 
and, and, and cultural knowledge so that they also resonate with what people know. It's an evolutionary process. You increase your understanding, you increase what you're willing to claim. The principles themselves evolve, of course. If you had a framework that is frozen in time, it would become increasingly inapplicable. The language of rights has just simply been expanded to include food, education, healthcare. Does someone have a right to a home? Does someone have a right to a job? Do we call these things rights? We consider internet as a, a human right. Access to culture in general is about rights. Human rights, they are not static, they are dynamic. It's a never-ending work process. Today, every country in West Africa has an elected leader. There have been rollbacks in some countries. How do we fight for rights with minimal inconvenience? The Central and Eastern Europe, the basic problem is if I'm starting to lose my rights, what I'm ready to do about it. The most important thing is to empower people so that they defend their own rights. You have to nourish them, to protect them. And the way to protect them is to, to go forward, to ask for more. Around the world, everybody's pulling together towards this goal. We hold dear our freedoms, our rights. It could be the Indian approach to religious diversity, the Brazilian approach to poverty, South African, Indonesian, Turkish insights. Can we integrate those? This battle is a common battle. What kind of world do we want to build together? Human rights is an opportunity for everybody to get access to a better life. Every person counts. Whenever human rights are guarded or expanded, something in the human spirit straightens up.